you join me for yet another video on the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 and in this video I'm going to give you my perspective from a 20 year old, a younger person looking at this bike which is really more of a classically styled motorbike um, and give you my true opinion. Wow, it's truly very nice and warm so I've had to take my jumper off. Um, if you watch the channel on a regular basis, you'll know that me and the old man are huge fans of Royal Enfield and in particular the Interceptor is my favourite. I think it's his as well, or either that or the classic. Um, and coming from a perspective of someone who is 20 years old, myself, um, this is the kind of bike I would go and buy as a first bike. I know I didn't, um, but for six and a half grand, the amount of bike you get for your money, the amount of joy it gives you, the noise it makes, the beautiful loads of character, um, and the amount of people who stop and look at it and go, you know, what's that, um, is incredible. The bang for your buck is almost unbeatable. Um, and I really do struggle to find any other bikes that match this for bang for your buck. Um, and I think as someone who's perhaps got an A2 license, um, with this being 47 horsepower, you can go and ride it at 19 years old. So it is a fantastic place to start. Um, carry on from where I was I believe that even at any age whether you're starting out riding later on in life um, maybe you're 45 or maybe you're 65 um, regardless of your age I think this bike is a perfect starter um, you know because it's inexpensive um, if you do decide that motorcycling isn't for you you've not gone and spent a fortune um, and you'll quite easily sell it um, and I don't think you'll lose a hell of a lot of money on it really. Um, they're very easy to ride, nice and stable at motorway speeds, lovely handling in the corners. Um, it's a reasonably tall bike compared to, you know, cruisers and things like that. Um, and you can lean down a fair amount, enough really, in the real world. Um, so yeah, lovely in the corners. Suspension's very forgiving, soaks up the bumps very well, so you're not gonna find yourself going over a bump and it shooting you off, um, which is obviously really good, makes it a bit safer. Um, stopping power could be a little bit better, but it's not awful. Um, and for the sorts of speeds you'll be doing, as I always say, um, it's good enough. Royal Enfields are very easily customizable. There's lots of aftermarket parts available, so you can really make this bike your own and put your own twist on it, um, which is always a good thing. You don't want to look the same as every other person on the road. Um, and if you were even looking at one of these as a second bike, it'd be ideal for that. Um, something to be a commuter in the city, whether it's in the countryside, enjoying the lanes. Um, this really is a perfect all-rounder. Um, perhaps even if you wanted to do a bit of green laning, you could um, put some knobbly tyres on it and um, sort the suspension out and make it a little bit softer. Um, you could do that, or you could buy a Himalayan. Um, but yeah, it really is a very good bike for all-round purposes. So if you want one bike that does everything, um, then this is a very good choice. If you want it as a second bike, um, for your little run around, it's a great bike for that as well. Um, so really, you can't go wrong. Um, and I would probably say, if you were starting out and getting a first bike, 
this bike, because it's got pretty good amount of oomph, you're not going to find yourself getting a bit bored of it after a short amount of time, whereas you might, with one of the smaller Royal Enfields, find that you want a little bit more power, which this delivers. Um, and even if you do get fed up with this and you think you want more, you could then bore out the um, cylinders and make it a little bit more powerful, but you make it probably 850cc. Um, or you could go and buy a Triumph Bonneville after this, but this would certainly set you on the road um, nicely and prepare you for that. If you own one of these motorbikes, let me know in the comments section down below um, how old you are. It'd be interesting to know the sort of primary age range for these sorts of bikes. Um, now, being a younger person myself, this is the sort of thing I'm into. These Triumphs, Harleys, um, you know, I like my Cruisers, I like my Classics, my modern Classics. Um, but most people my age are more interested in, you know, sports bikes, nakeds, um, super bikes. Um, which don't interest me at all. Um, don't get me wrong, if I hear a Ducati going past, I certainly love the sound of it, uh, but I wouldn't want to ride one. Um, and I'm much more interested in bikes like these. So it'd be interesting to know how many other people my age think the same, um, or whether it's mainly slightly older people, or maybe late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Who knows who ride these primarily? Um, so let me know down below. Ah. A Royal Enfield Super Meteor, a brand new one, absolutely gorgeous. Um, very nice. <laughs> Fellow Royal Enfield rider out in beautiful sunshine. In two weeks time, I will be 21 years old. Um, and what that means is, because I did my A2 license at 19, I can then do the same test again um, on a slightly more powerful motorbike, um, and that will around, allow me to ride bikes with more power than 47 horsepower. Um, now, obviously, the government believe that after two years of riding on the road and getting thousands of miles under your belt, that you would, of course, forget altogether how to ride a motorbike, and it will be like starting from fresh. So you'll need another five lessons um, and to fork out a thousand pounds to learn how to ride a motorbike again, because. We're all so forgetful that after two years, um, we just forget. We don't know. I mean, I've forgotten what that, that lever does. Um, uh, which one's the brake? I've, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'll have to be doing that again, uh, which I will be doing because obviously I want to ride um, bigger bikes and it will allow me to ride all sorts of bikes on the channel. So um, I will be biting the bullet and doing it. Um, but... Um, as you can tell, I'm rather bitter about having to do the test twice and fork out a load more of my money, but what can we do?
I've come to the beautiful Eyebrook Reservoir today to film. Um, this reservoir has got a quite interesting history. Um, it was created um, between 1937 and 1940 um, and it was created primarily for the water supply to the Corby Steelworks. Um, but in 1943 it was actually used for practice um, for the Dam Busters um, raids um, in World War II uh, with special bouncing bombs which were designed to um, destroy German dams during the war. Um, so this was actually where they practiced for doing that, so quite an incredible bit of history. But a beautiful location which is now used primarily as a fishing um, lake um, and a nice place to stop. Um, and just uh, take it all in and go for a little walk, it's lovely. And today it was meant to be cloudy, 15 degrees, and the sun's out, it's absolutely gorgeous, it feels about 20 degrees, so uh, Met Office wrong again.